picture of the animal and I can skip that one. All right, next next one we're going to talk about index species is the lobed finned fish, right? Um, first thing we're going to talk about, okay? And these are the lobes, a little stronger bonial structures, right? Okay. Um, still partly made out of cartilage, just like um, fish bones, majority of fish bones are made out of cartilage. Okay. Um, and then this picture right here, I'm trying to understand. Um, this isn't a salamander yet. Okay, the idea is these guys developed into salamanders over time, but um, changed their gills to like little weird salamanders, how they can you know change from lungs to gills. Um, the issue here with these guys, in that picture right there, that's an artist rendition. Okay, in science, several times we'll come across where they need a gap or fill something in, and so they have an artist rendition. So it's you know be careful and watch out for some of those. I know here lately we um, they finally proved a couple years ago they finally proved that there were other stars. They had other planets orbiting them, just like the Earth. It was always theorized, but we never able to prove it. And we were actually able to prove it with uh, large radio telescopes. So they're telescopes that use radio waves, not visual sight like we see. And they put out all these pictures. Well, all these pictures you saw all over the news, they were artist renditions. We don't know what they look like. We just know they're there. We know they're there, but what they really look like, we have, we have no idea. No idea. And, and this is one of those things. So just be careful and be aware of when things are reported and what's an artist rendition and what's not. Um, because one of those things that we can really use to mislead people and uh be careful with that guys you know what i'm saying um i apologize my phone's ringing. let me pause this all right guys apologize about that all right so back to the lobe twin fish um 410 million years ago right so this is a picture of a woman swimming with a lobe twin fish right um yeah so it's life and uh, what's really funny is we looked at the trilobites, we looked at the ammonites, and you, you could argue and say, okay, there's been some differences there in development. Um, but seriously, with these guys, they look exactly the same as the fossils. I remember in the 90s when they first found these guys in deep waters. And the interesting thing is, yeah, they move around on the bottom uh, surface. There's other fish that, you know, crawl around on the, on the surface of the, um, of the ocean surface. But these guys never left land. They never left the ocean surface to get on land. That's why we haven't seen them until the 90s or the 80s um, when they were discovered. So, you know, the, the issue with using these guys as an unique species, especially these ones right here, is if they really did exist, you know, live 300, 325 million years ago, and um, they still exist now, um, we, that doesn't prove anything if you find an exit. That just proves that it could be from now to 325 million years ago. Right? That, that didn't help you at all. Um, you know, about the next species. Um, this is a cool one. This is a fossil of a uh, human hand and a marine dinosaur, the Ischosaurus. Um, you, you can read that yourself. Um, these are both a well, human fossil and that dinosaur's fossil, right? But none of the theories say humans lived 200 million years ago. No, it's like a couple hundred thousand, I think. But anyways. Skip that one, skip that one. All right, here we go, this one's cool. Uh, this is an image um, uh, from a medical pathologist, okay? Dinosaur bones, right? A couple hundred million years old, um, correct? As is the theory put forth. Um, this dinosaur bone, they have found blood inside the bone. So, yeah, I'm not even gonna spell that one out for you guys. Let me think about that. Blood, several hundred million years old, yeah, so, yeah, that's a fun one, but, yeah. Um, here's some statements. Um, I'll let y'all read that for yourselves. I'm not going to read it to you. So let me explain what circular reasoning is, right? So if you ask somebody, okay, how do I old, how do I determine how old the layer is? They're like, okay, so we have the layer. Let's see if I can spell it, layer, right? Yeah, it's kind of incursive, right? So I've got the layers, right? Here's a layer. Here's, a, you know, different stratus lines between the layers, right? I'm like, I want to know how old this layer is right here, okay? So they're going to tell you, well, it's by the fossils, okay? The fossils, man, this is rough. The fossils in that layer, right? But then you ask them, but hey, I want to know how old the fossil is, right? Because I don't know how old the layer is, but I mean, okay, about the fossil. Well, then how do you determine how old the fossil is? You wanna know how Sir Charles Lyell determined how old the fossil was? By the layer. That's circular reasoning. 
Um, guys, that's an, that's an argument of fallacy. Um, that didn't prove anything, um, and, and that's a big issue. So, um, man, I need a slide for this, but we'll talk about it. The other thing to add to this is how uh, carbon dating. Some of y'all may be familiar with carbon dating. It's where we take radioactive isotopes or elements, right? You have your you have your periodic table elements. You have your oh, you have all your little protons in the nucleus, right? Your protons. Then you have your neutrons that did not turn blue like it was supposed to. You have your neutrons, okay? The neutron, got a neutron, right? They're all in the nucleus. Man, this is a rough drawing. Then you have your little electrons that go on the outside, right? They're like orbiting, going speed of light, all over the place, right? So what a radioactive element is, is one where the nucleus is so large that it can't stay together. That what's called the strong force is what holds it together is overcome every now and then by the weak force. And so literally the weak force shoots out two protons and two neutrons, making a helium atom, okay? All right, and that's radioactive decay, okay? So it became a new element because now it has, a, has less protons, so it's a new element, and it just released a helium, okay? And we call that, um, yeah, that's, that's radiation. The atomic bomb, we just made that happen really fast, released a lot of energy. Nuclear power plants, it's happening gradually, and we're harvesting energy, okay? So the amount of time it takes for, if I have one gram Okay, for example, uranium, okay? If I have one gram of uranium, and say it takes, I don't know, let's see, we'll say, I'm just, whatever, we don't know. You can look it up if you want to know specifically. Five years for that one gram, okay, because it's going to radioactively decay gradually, right? Not all at one time, just gradually. That one gram in five years, it becomes 0.5 grams. So we have half, okay? This is what we call half-life, right? So on radioactive elements, we, we talk about what's called the half-life. And the half-life is the amount of time it takes for a given amount to become half of a radioactive. And it varies for all the different radioactive co compounds, um, whether it's uranium, plutonium, um, any man-made elements. They're always synthetic elements. They usually have a half-life of like seconds, if not milliseconds, make them the large um, particle colliders, you know. Um, yeah. So we've got circular reasoning, we have the half-life. So the issue with all this goes back into, okay, let me back up. Sorry, we have the half-life, right? So uh, there's actually five different types of radioactive elements, isotopes. One's carbon, this carbon-14. It's a radioactive isotope, right? All organic compounds are made out of carbon, so it's a good one, okay? Um, there's a few others, there's, there's five total, all right? And so they'll actually do all five of these radio, um, radiometric dating, okay? They're, they test how much of this isotope's there, and they use the half-life, right? Okay, Lyle developed the fossil record before we even knew about radioactive isotopes, about radiation, period, okay? Um, they weren't sticking uranium in their pockets and learning about radiation until the 1900s, okay? Um, So he developed this with no basis. He's, he's got no sound evidence for it. And the next part of this is, okay, all the carbon dating we use, let's see, we're gonna go to the next slide. Yeah, all the carbon dating we use is based upon his geometric column, his geological column, okay? So you see the issue here? And that gets us back to where we started this class, right? the carbon dating those isotopes they exist right we can measure them all that kind of stuff um but how long and how much do we start with right the theory is they came from stars well stars have in in the theory of the big bang right stars have been exploding compressing building new solar systems exploding compressing over and over very general explanation but over and over and that's where all these larger isotopes come from um well, we don't know. The amount of matter in the universe is still theoretical. We only know how, we only have a theory of how much is in our galaxy, okay, the Milky Way galaxy. Uh, we keep realizing that there's tons more galaxies than we can ever imagine, all right? So you get the issue here is all this is based on highly theoretical evidence based upon some man who was a lawyer who put forth this theory with no good principle and we've already shown how he's wrong in the fact that 
complex organisms have been around for millions of years, whether it was their brain, um, their eyes. They, there's amazing complexity to life, and it's amazing. And it just, yeah, I'll let you do with that whatever you want to. But uh, you just understand that that. So the biggest supporter and the biggest contributor to this evolutionary theory is a fossil record. We I mean, just kind of be aware. Of it. Like there's fossils. I'm not denying there's fossils, but the age of the fossils and how old we've seen these fossils are, something we really got to consider. Um, here's another quote. I'll give you a second to read that one. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, Darwin. I tell you what, guys. So I'm gonna pause the video here, pick back up, start part two. It's already lasted 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Woo. Um, catch y'all back.